Howdy folks. Now, so many people are looking to get into the full frame market. 2020 has seen a whole bunch of new options come out and we now have some brand new on the market cameras for around about $1,000 and even more previous generation models significantly cheaper than that. Now, I'm not about to suggest that there's one perfect camera out there that's going to satisfy everyone's requirements. It's going to come down to your own personal shooting habits. And of course, once we're talking about best value, your own personal budget is going to play as much to do with your requirements. So I'm not gonna select out one camera that I think is absolutely the best for everyone. But in this video, I am going to run you through what I think is an absolute bargain of a great full frame camera option and run you through a simple matrix that will help you identify what's going to suit you best. So let's play a guessing game. The camera I'm talking about today is an absolute legend. It's one of the most enjoyable cameras that I've ever shot with. When it came out, it was revolutionary. I've shot with this model of camera all around the world in all kinds of different situations. And if you've been following YouTube, I've pretty much had it on and off since the beginning of the channel. In my mind, this is one of the legends within Nikon's digital history and arguably the best DSLR made in the entire decade that it was released. It's perfect in the hand. It creates beautiful colors. It has excellent autofocus and ISO performance and it's responsive enough for all but the fastest moving of sports. At the time of release, here's some of the reviews. DP Review said it has tank-like build quality and it's possibly the most compelling, capable and well-rounded professional SLR ever made. Image Resource gave it a perfect five out of five and said its ISO performance is stunning. And Ken Rockwell, believe it or not, said that it was the best Nikon DSLR ever made. So you've probably guessed what it is by now. It's the beast, the legend, the champion, the D700. This thing is, it's just beautiful. It was originally out in 2008, and I know in technology terms that's a lifetime, but it was a $3,000 shrunk down version of the D3S at the time, and now you can get these used for a bargain. I got this one for like $400 from KEH Camera, that's cheaper than buying the entry-level APS-C camera brand new these days. And trust me, this thing still performs. I, I think every generation has said this about the things that came before them, but they just don't make them like that anymore. This thing is as well built or better than just about any DSLR or mirrorless camera that's on the market these days. Yes, the integrated grip ones maybe are even more robust, but having the pop-up flash, one of the last generation of this level of camera that had it, it's just outstanding. And yes, 2008 is a long time, but when this came out, it was an amazing professional grade camera that produced beautiful images that won competitions, that billboards were made with, that covers were taken with, that reportage was done with, shot in all kinds of different genres. It was an amazing camera and nothing has changed. Cameras don't have a use by date. It's not a bottle of milk. So yes, whilst new tracking technology or higher res screens or this or that or the other have come out and the market has moved on, the camera is as good and as capable as it was then. So if you wanna shoot magazine covers and billboards and win competitions and all of that stuff with it, this hasn't changed. It just has your requirements and your skill level changed. And again, I'm not saying that this is absolutely for everyone. You do need to sit down and have a think about what your particular requirements are. So here's how to do that. Whether you're looking to buy yourself a camera or figuring out what you should upgrade to, it could be cameras or lenses, any equipment, but let's talk about cameras. 
Grab yourself a pen and paper. You know what they are still? Otherwise grab your tablet or grab your voice recorder or whatever it is that kids are using these days. And then start to make out a list of what are the features that are non-negotiable for you. And it's going to really vary person to person. So it could be, I really want it to have a particular camera mount because I have a whole lot of lenses in that. Or you might want one that has a shorter flange distance so that you're able to adjust and modify other lenses to work on that mount. Figure out what the absolute non-negotiables are. Then you wanna look at what are the really nice to have or what are almost non-negotiables for you. And for that, I can't recommend this strongly enough. I don't know that enough people go back through their previous best images and look at what they took, how they took them and establish patterns from that. So go through and actually see what were your best shots over the last couple of years. Take a look at how they were shot, what they were shot with, and be honest with yourself. Was the resolution of the camera an important aspect of you getting that final image? Was the dynamic range? Was the frames per second? The autofocus? All of those different aspects. And let's be honest, gear does matter. In some cases, it will. If your, one of your best shots was taken at an indoor sporting event, having low light performance and autofocus is absolutely going to be a critical aspect to capturing the shot. But there may be that a lot of your shots are it's more to do with your skill and your timing and your experience of being in the right place. And a lot of those different aspects didn't make a whole lot of a difference. So figure out what that list of nice to haves, maybes, all of that kind of thing is. And then key one, what your budget is. Whether you're a pro or a hobbyist, I don't recommend going into debt to buy equipment. So buy within your means. If of course you're going through the process and you say my budget is $500, and you find what you really want is 700, then maybe wait and save up that extra money rather than buying the lower end one. That's a decision you're going to have to make. Then with that list of nice to haves, must haves that you've written out, head to KEH camera and you can actually go through and filter. Now, you know, whether you're looking at 12 year old things or six month old things, they do offer a 180 day warranty on everything and it's been tested and cleaned and inspected so you can buy with confidence and they have like over 40,000 different items in stock at any one time. So you're going to actually have to go on and check it for yourself because what I'm looking at today, some of it may have sold, other things may be in stock, they may have all of the different, you know, from bargain uh, level of quality through to like new, that's always going to be changing. So you need to check in the stock for yourself, but let's bring it up and take a look. Okay, so let's jump in, take a look at the shop page. We'll go down to all digital cameras here. And then I'm going to start out by searching by format. So I only wanna be looking at full frame cameras. So let's start with that filter. And then let's say that I am happy for, actually maybe we won't filter by brand. Let's do it that way to start off. So we're talking full frame and I want to have it be at least 12 megapixels, but no more than 36, let's say. So I'm gonna tick all the ones that are within that range. Well, there's lots of variation. Now, I guess there's, there must be some Leica in there, but let's say I only wanna look at ones that support autofocus. I'm not looking at a manual focus camera here. Let's apply those filters. And then let's say my price range is $500. So I'll say 400 to 600. Well, there's a lot that are actually 200 to 400. Maybe let's start down there. It's easier to work your way up than to work your way down, I find, with prices. So here we go. Well, here's the, the very one I'm talking about, the D700. Excellent condition, and in my experience with KEH, excellent means you'll be surprised that it almost looks brand new um, through to bargain. And I've often bought bargain things from them that again, had a few marks on them, but they're, they're working fine and they do come with that warranty. So 360 bucks. So that would tick all of my requirements. You need to look at your own. Obviously it ticks my requirements. Um, so you'll see here sometimes if something's out of stock, they'll have the A7R listed here, but that it's normally in that kind of a price range. Um, 
So you can also pick up the original Canon 5D was an incredible camera and it's even cheaper. So $250 through to 375, are you kidding me? That's an incredible camera. If anyone is shooting Canon and looking to go full frame, if you don't need 4K video, but you do want an incredibly well-rounded professional camera, don't mind that it's a little bit long in the tooth. That is basically the, the sister to this D700, an incredible camera. Let's take a look at the higher price point. So let's jump up to the 400 to 600 range. Okay, so here we have the 5D Mark II. So bringing in new features, better video capabilities. Um, and you can still get that for under 500 though in bargain condition. So 500 through to 465, sorry, through to 625. And you can get an infrared converted black and white Nikon D700 for just over 400 bucks. Interesting. And let's say you are looking at something a little bit higher, you trying to stay under a thousand bucks, like you can get some entry level cameras these days. So let's say 800 to a thousand. I mean, you're really getting up into some high end cameras here. You can get a D3S, that's like a serious um, sports Olympics photography. 5D Mark III, also an amazing camera. So you can see they have a huge different range of cameras. I'll pull out a couple at a few different price points and throw them into the description below that you might wanna consider depending on what system you're in and basically by what budget you're looking at. Now, if you do find something on the KEH website, the link for them is below. You can use the code MATG at checkout for an extra 5% off. They are sponsoring this video. They've been a partner of the channel for years now. I wouldn't be recommending you to them if I didn't think that they were a great company offering a great service. And just the reality is I still love the D700. Some of the shots we've taken on this trip and over the past decade that are my favorites have been taken with this camera. And for my work, yes, there are times where having the latest cutting edge features really help. I'm filming myself at this moment with a camera that is tracking my eye so I'm able to move around and not worry about that. In some situations, that's really helpful. In other situations where I just want great autofocus, insane build quality, you know, good low light performance still by today's standards, then a camera like this is a great option. And really 12 megapixels for a lot of the things that I'm doing is still enough. There are times where having the 40, 50, 60 is really nice, but where it's absolutely critical to have that resolution, it's less often than you might think. So let me know guys, uh, leave me a comment below. What do you think is the best value full frame camera for you? So let us know what your requirements are and what kind of a budget you're looking at. It could be a, a used $20,000 medium format camera, or it could be a used $200 crop camera. Um, and what are you using overall? Do you actually have an older camera that is still your primary daily user or maybe as your second camera when you're going into difficult shooting situations and the rain and you don't wanna take your latest and greatest gear with you? So let us know as a comment below and thanks to KH Camera for sponsoring this video. Great partners of the channel and really, really lovely people to deal with. Cheers everyone, I'll talk to you soon.